What's up guys? Welcome back again to your Heroclix headquarters. Today we're going to be continuing our full set review of Avengers 60th with the chases and stay tuned for the last part where we go over the legacy cards. But uh, starting us off here without any further ado, let's jump right in. We have Black Skull. Uh, and this one is so cool. Uh, I'm a collector of all the symbiotes, all the venoms, carnages, all that kind of stuff. So, of course, I had to go out of my way to get this guy. And uh, I did get lucky enough to also pull his team-up card. So we'll take a look at that here in a second. But first of all, he has the Multiversal Masters of Evil trait that every single one of the chases has. So uh, we'll just read it the one time. It says, free if Black Skull began your turn on the map. Replace him with another character with this trait on the same click number. So that works just like a shifting focus type character. You can uh, put as many of these other Masters of Evil on the sideline as you want, and you can just take a free action to swap between them during the game at will. Uh, so you can play just one of them and, you know, be able to get to use all of them throughout the game. Or I've also seen people play two or even three of them sometimes. And, you know, you can swap one in, swap one out, and then kind of put one where you need it at when you need it. So, like, if you're playing Black Skull and another one, right, like, maybe you swap out Black Skull for a, a different Masters of Evil, and then over here you have another Masters of Evil that you swap out for the Black Skull that you just swapped out. And then you can have him over here to use his, uh, he's got, like, flurry blades and stuff like that which we'll take a look at. But his first trait here gives him plasticity and super senses, and if Black Skull is within four squares in line of fire of an opposing character, he can't be targeted by range attacks. So that's a sim the same symbiotic fusion trait that we saw back in like Empire with those Venom chases and uh, Venom super rares and stuff. Venom Magneto is one of the big ones that has that. Uh, so that's a really great trait. And then on his uh, specials here, uh, well, first of all, he has another trait, which gives him leadership, shape change, and when Black Skull uses leadership and succeeds, after resolutions, you may generate a War Machine Bystander, which is right here. They just got some uh, sidestep, 10 attack, energy explosion, uh, they're giant size. Uh, they also have Masters of Evil team ability, so... You know, not too crazy, but you get a couple of those guys up on someone and then it makes all your close attacks super easy to hit uh, because it makes the defense minus one. So it's really cool that he can just pop out pogs and, you know, you got the shape change from that trait and super senses from the other trait. So he's got the double rollouts and then you've got charge, flurry, stealth, and giant reach too. So he's a great close attacker with that charge, flurry, blades, exploit. You've got mastermind just in case both of your rollouts fail. Uh, you can potentially mastermind it just onto his own, you know, little War Machine bystanders. He also has Masters of Evil and Hydra team abilities as well. So uh, it's a really good combo. That way, if he's adjacent to somebody, when one of your friendlies is making close attack, he can minus one their defense. And if he's adjacent to a friendly making a range attack that he has line of fire to, he can minus one their defense as well. So he's got that same basic effect for close and range, which is awesome. He's also got symbiote keyword, of course. He's got, you know, the Venom symbiote on him. So you can give him, like, the red or black symbiote if you wanted to for free, which is kind of nice. Uh, it doesn't really give him a lot, though, because he pretty much already has most of the effects that those give him anyway. Uh, but yeah, I mean, either at 100 or 50 points, you know, at 100 you do have outwit, so that's pretty cool, but to be honest, like, anytime you see these guys played, they're gonna all be at 50 points, because the 50 point lines are just so good. You know, 100's not bad, but 50, like, you know, you get so much, you'd rather play two of the Masters of Evil for uh, two different 50 point characters, rather than just one of them at 100, right? So uh, that's pretty much why that is. And then you also have on the team up card, they all had their own team up card, which is pretty crazy. And his is for a Hydra or Masters of Evil theme team. If Black Skull is on a listed theme team, friendly characters have the Hydra team ability. And if they already have the Hydra team ability, when they use it, they have improved targeting characters. So not too bad, it really can buff up a Hydra team, you know, being able to see through characters. It's nice because all of your Hydra people using the team ability could be like behind you. They don't need to be, you know, awkwardly next to you somewhere. Uh, it lets you just stack up a bunch of people behind you and they can still see through you to, you know, buff or debuff the opponent's defense for that team ability. So, you know, pretty cool. Uh, anyway, I, yeah, I really like this guy a lot. 
He is, I think, one of the better ones in my opinion. Not the best, probably. Uh, a lot of these chases are really, really good, but he's really good to start with because you could just roll the leadership, potentially pop out a pog for free, and then swap to a different one. So he's like one of the best ones to start with just for that reason. And then later on, as the fight gets more into a close combat situation, he's really good to swap to because, you know, the charge flurry blades exploit and double rollouts and mastermind and all that fun stuff. So for all those reasons, I really like him a lot. And like I said, I think he's one of the better chases. All right, and then up next after Black Skull is Dark Phoenix. Unfortunately, I don't have this one, but uh, it is definitely another one of the better chases to go for. Uh, and it, the sculpt on it is amazing. I wish I had it to show off to you guys, but regardless, she of course has the multiversal Masters of Evil trait to swap between them all. She has a special movement power that gives her hypersonic speed, and when Dark Phoenix is given a move action after resolutions, you can choose one, move up to two other friendly characters with the brute keyword up to half their speed values, or a friendly character with the brute keyword may make an attack. So she's really, really good to team up with um, you know, a lot of brute characters, especially the Prime Hulk from this set is one of the better ones. Uh, even though, because of the update to Hulk, uh, now that it's after any one of his actions resolves that he gets to, like, roll or heal off of destroying blocking or whatever. So she, since it's her action letting him move, he actually doesn't get to heal off of destroying blocking, um, just during the move or whatever, which kind of sucks. But regardless, she is still good to combo with him or any other brute just to move them around or just to make an attack because of course, just being able to make more attacks and do more damage. She could be taking a move action all the way across the map and he can be up in your opponent's starting area punching somebody because of it. So pretty great. And even if you don't do that, she does have that hypersonic. So she can just run up there and make an attack herself. She's got seven range. So that'd be four range once you half it. Uh, she does have Masters of Evil team ability, of course, as well as cosmic energies. So she's protected outwit and has the willpower every turn. Uh, at the 100 point line, she's got 12 attack penetrating blasts and 3 damage with exploit with 18 super senses. But, you know, of course, we're playing her at the 50 most of the time. So she's still got 11 attack penetrating blasts, but 3 damage with support, which is nice because you can swap her in to just support somebody and uh, get some healing in, which is really nice. And on her special attack power later on in her dial, when she goes to regular hypersonic, then she has poison and steel energy, which is nice to heal up. But also, if uh, whoever you had out first, you know, took a hit and took some damage, you could have that person run up and, uh, you know, then take the free action to swap to her, and that she technically hasn't been moved or placed this turn. She could use poison to poison somebody. So that's really cool. I like that a lot. Uh, and then, of course, you got stop, super senses, regeneration. When this click is revealed after resolutions, you may place a friendly character with a brute keyword into a square adjacent to Dark Phoenix. Uh, so that's cool, kind of, like, if you want. She's got a stop click regardless, which is nice. Uh, which she can regen off of or steal energy off of. Um, so that's always really good. But then if you want to, you can pop somebody with brute keyword next to her so they can kind of be your bodyguard or something. So yeah, she's really good. Uh, like I said, one of the best chases. She does a lot of different stuff, especially for brute keywords. And two of the Masters of Evil, at least, uh, have the brute keyword. I know uh, the, the Hound and Thor, which we'll take a look at later. Uh, so she's really good teaming up with them also. But then taking a look at her team up card as well for Brute or Masters of Evil. If Dark Phoenix is on a listed theme team, friendly characters can use Steel Energy. If they can already use it, they instead heal two clicks when they do. So that's pretty great if you got some Steel Energy on your team or just to give everybody Steel Energy is really nice as well. Uh, so yeah, she's really, really strong for brute teams and just makes a great combo with like Prime Hulk and some of the other good brute keyword characters nowadays. So definitely one of the ones you want to go after. And again, one of the best sculpts in the whole set for sure. All right, up next we have King Killmonger. Uh, this one is one of the best ones defensively, whereas I would say Black Skull and Dark Phoenix would be one of the better ones offensively. This guy is one of the best ones defensively. So he again has a Masters of Evil trait to swap in and uh, you have hacking into your pretty little pieces, willpower for all characters with this trait when King Killmonger and or one or more adjacent friendly characters would be hit by an opposing equipped character, roll a d6. 
four through six, the attacker misses all targets instead. Protected pulse wave. So that's really obnoxious because uh, basically the protected pulse wave is, I think, going a little too far maybe. Uh, but yeah, a four through six, 50-50 rollout on him and everybody next to him against all characters that are equipped is really insanely good. Uh, I mean, you know, if you look at the meta, basically every good meta piece, you want to equip it with something. Uh, to make it just that much better. And if you do, you run the risk of this guy giving your whole their whole team a 50% rollout against you. So it's a really hard thing to consider now. Uh, you kind of want to like leave one of your attackers unequipped just in case. Uh, so you have somebody to attack this guy and try to get him out of the way. So that's the way it's not making it that much harder on the rest of your team. You know, if everybody had to get through a 50% rollout to hit him, it'd be pretty rough. Uh, so that's something to think about anyway, uh, but yeah, this dude's really good. He has, he starts on the 50 line with sidestep, penetrating blast, exploit, and 18 impervious. So he has his own rollout as well. Uh, and then he gets a special movement power either at the 100 point line starting out or later on on the 50 point line, but it gives him charge, running shot, and sidestep. So you get a ton more move and attack options there. And, uh, he usually has penetrating blast and exploit. But later on in his uh, special attack power there, he gets Blades, Claws, Fangs, Precision Strike, Steel Energy, and Giant Reach 2. So a pretty crazy combo there. He also gets some Outwit to go with that. Uh, so Blades, Claws, Precision, Steel Energy, and the two square reach is really good. Uh, yeah, anyway, then you got the Masters of Evil or Wakanda team up. So if King Killmonger is on a listed theme team, friendly characters can use Blades, Claws, Fangs. If they already can, when they use it, increase the damage dealt by one. That's actually really good. Uh, you know, especially on like a Wakanda team, there's a lot of Blades. But even on a Masters of Evil team, you know, we got Black Skull. He's got Blades. This guy's got Blades. And it doesn't have to just be these chases. You know, it can be any Masters of Evil. I'm pretty sure there's a few others like... Baron Zemo or somebody's got blades, so uh, you could do some good stuff with that. Being able to increase your damage by one on every blades roll could be pretty awesome. But anyway, like I said, this guy's great and one of the best defensive options out of all the chases. Up next we have Doom Supreme. Uh, I wish I had this one. I'm a big fan of Doom, so I just want this guy because he's Doom. Uh, but he's really fun. So for 100 points, he starts off with running shot, 12 attack, pulse wave, 18 invincible, 4 damage. Uh, for the 50 point line, pretty much the same thing, but three damage, and he has uh, force blast instead of running shot. So, kind of meh. I wish there was like a special that gave him running shot and force blast, or sidestep and force blast, or something. Uh, but regardless, uh, he of course has Masters of Evil to uh, swap between them all. You have another trait here that says, leave the earth for last. Opposing characters within range that were not part of your opponent's starting force can't use protected outwit or safeguard. So that's really strong uh, because it's really good against, you know, themselves, right? Against the other Masters of Evil on your opponent's team that are swapping in and out. Uh, whoever wasn't the one that actually started on the map as their starting force is not going to be able to use Protected or Safeguard, Outwit, uh, any other characters they bring into the game from any sideline active traits or other swap out type things. Uh, like X-Men swap outs or something like that, uh, which I feel like there's not a whole lot. Even with these Masters of Evil, I think there's only Dark Phoenix, maybe? Um, and I guess anybody that has a stop click or something, but yeah, I think it's just Dark Phoenix. And oh, I guess there's also Mephisto, so it also works really good against the Ultra Chase Mephisto we'll take a look at later. Anyway, um, so that's nice. I don't feel like it has a huge, uh, like, there's not, like, a lot of things that that's going to affect that I can think of off the top of my head anyway. Uh, so I don't know how that's going to do, really. But then on his special defense power he gets later, he has invulnerability, mastermind, regeneration, protected outwit. Uh, so actually, <laughs> that works against that protected outwit ability. Uh, anyway, then he also has a damage power for his whole dial. Doom does not negotiate leadership. Protected Outwit. When an opposing character within range uses Outwit, Perplex, or Probability Control, after resolutions, choose one. Remove an action token from a friendly character, heal a friendly character one click, or Doom Supreme can use the used power until he chooses again. So that right there is probably my favorite part about him altogether. You know, you got the leadership that's Protected Outwit, 
And then anytime somebody uses one of the basic three best support powers in the game, uh, Wet Perplex or Prob, you can get a lot of good options there, remove a token from somebody, he'll click on somebody, or he can just use that power until he chooses again. So he might be able to get some prob or outwit or perplex, whatever you need, whatever you want him to have. So yeah, that's cool. Um, oh, he also has Masters of Evil as well as Minions of Doom team abilities, but then he has a uh, team up because they all do. His is for Latveria or Masters of Evil. If Doom Supreme is on a listed theme team, friendly characters have Minions of Doom team ability. If they already have Minions of Doom team ability, when they use it, they heal two clicks instead. So good get him some extra healing if you just toss him on a Latveria team. I kind of feel like for 100 points, he would actually be pretty decent just to kind of headline a uh, Latveria team for fun, especially with that uh, team up card. Every time something's KO'd, he heals up two clicks. He's got a long, you know, they all have a long, like, nine-click dial for 100 points. Uh, but for 50, they all have, like, six clicks still. So, you know, 50 is usually still the better way. But uh, regardless, he's really cool. Looks like a lot of fun. I feel like he's unfortunately not one of the better ones uh, just because his own traits kind of work better against himself because he's the main one, I feel like, that has all the protected outwit stuff, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, I do really like, you know, the ability where an opposing uses that wit perplexer prob and you get something out of it. That's really cool. But regardless, it's a cool version of Doom and I'm going to want him anyway because of that. But moving right along, next up we have Kid Thanos. Uh, he has Masters of Evil team ability, five range, triple target. Of course, Masters of Evil trait to swap between them all. A uh, special movement power here that I really like. Phase teleport, passenger four. When Kid Thanos is given a move action, after resolutions, deal one damage to each adjacent opposing character. I love free damage, okay? Free damage is the best thing you can do. You don't have to roll for it. All he has to do is move and then just after he's given a move action, you deal one damage to each adjacent opposing character for free. You don't have to roll for nothing. So it's really cool to just move him right into a squad of people and then just boom, boom, boom. They all take, you know, you could easily deal like three or four clicks of damage if you just move to the right spot. So that's really cool. The only downside is that you're just right up there in everybody's face. You just took a move action to just park yourself there. Uh, so they could retaliate pretty easily. But, you know, that's still free damage is free damage. But actually, you know, the cool thing about him is he could move full move up there, get some bunch of free damage on somebody and then just swap out to somebody else that is, you know, a lot better defended than he is. You know, maybe somebody like Black Skull with the two double rollouts and Mastermind or uh, even King Killmonger that might have Impervious plus a 50 percent rollout, something like that, you know. Uh, anyway, then we have a uh, special defense power here that gives him stop, energy shield deflection, regeneration, and toughness. So, of course, stop clicks are always great, especially with regen to heal off of them. And then a special damage power that he starts with on the 100-point line, but he only has on his last three clicks on his 50-point line. Uh, or I guess also on the 100-point line. But regardless, it says probability control when Kid Thanos uses it to reroll an opposing attack roll. If the attack misses, after resolutions, give the attacker an action token. So not too bad. Uh, just having regular prob for most of his dial is fine too. But prob that can give an action token when they miss is just kind of adding insult to injury there. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like that thing, like if they already had an action token and they get a second action to attack, it doesn't really make any difference. They already got two action tokens. But if they had just cleared and then they attacked you and you propped it into a miss, then boom, they get a second token and then uh, now they got to clear again. So that could be pretty useful in certain niche situations. Uh, but yeah, I mean, otherwise, like uh, 11 or 12 attack with precision strike, 18 or 19 defense with toughness, depending if he's on 50 or 100. Uh, so nothing too crazy there. I really just like him for, you know, stop click and the ability to just move up and deal some damage to everybody. One thing I kind of f skipped over, it's his face teleport in Passenger 4, and when he's given a move action, deal one damage. So he can actually bring up a whole squad of people with him when he takes that move action, which is really good too. Uh, so like I said, you could swap to uh, like Black Skull who has Mastermind or something like that. And, you know, you have your whole squad next to you there. So it could be really good. And, you, you know, you could bring up people that can do free actions, can generate pogs for free, all that kind of stuff. So I could see Kid Thanos being pretty crazy 
for that type of team that just runs up in there with a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of lantern people that can free make constructs. Um, like Maggot is still really good to just free drop his poison pog. Um, now we got a couple spider people, you know, Peter, uh, the hunter or whatever that can free make pogs and stuff. So there's a lot of characters that can just free do stuff, uh, free make attacks with Clo uh, Captain America legacy card. So there's a lot of things you could do with that. I don't know. I, I do like him a lot. I really like that type of strategy. So I do kind of want to get me a kid Thanos just because that fits my play style so well. I love the type of teams that just carry up people and they do, a, and then they just drop free stuff and attack with that. And he does free damage just for moving next to him too. So that's really cool. But before I forget, he also has a team up for Masters of Evil and Scientist. So if Kid Thanos is on a listed theme team, friendly characters have safeguard opposing perplex, which is kind of nice, but you know, then people are just going to perplex up their own attack or defense anyway. So I feel like that's kind of whatever, but regardless, he himself is pretty cool. Up next, we have the Hound, which is a evil version of Wolverine. Um, and this guy is one of the ones that teams up well with the uh, Dark Phoenix that we took a look at earlier. So anyway, this guy's got improved movement for elevated and characters. Uh, he's got the multiversal masters of evil trait, of course. Loyal death hunter and power when hound attacks an opposing character that has been hit this turn by another friendly character that shares a keyword with him. Modify attack plus one. If the shared keyword is Phoenix Force, modify it attack plus two instead. So you know, pretty interesting. If you play the um, all together, you know, in the right way, you can get a lot of good plus two attacks that way. Uh, then you have combat reflexes, super senses, and toughness, the, which he has sporadically on his dial. He, I believe he starts off uh, on the 50-point line with just flurry blades, combat reflexes, and for the 100-point line, you know, you got charge blades, toughness. So eh, nothing too crazy there. Um, but then he has his damage power, his whole dial is exploit weakness, battle fury, but may still be carried by friendly characters with the Masters of Evil keyword. And when Hound takes damage after resolutions, you may heal him one click. So as long as he's not KO'd, he's healing one click back every time he takes a hit. Uh, he's got some steel energy sporadically in there. Um, it would be nice if that special defense power was a stop click with regen. <laughs> Then you'd have like two to three stop clicks on his dial and he would actually be really good and usable that way. You could just regen or steal energy off of them or something, you know, that would be cool. As is, he's kind of one of the worst chases uh, in my opinion, which sucks because I love Wolverine, so I wish he was a little better. Uh, his team up card is Masters of Evil or X-Men, which I don't know if they've errated yet. I don't think I saw that because he only has Animal Brute, Masters of Evil, Phoenix Force, and Weapon X keywords, so technically you can't play him on an X-Men theme team, so I'm not really sure what they're going for there. Uh, maybe they meant to give him X-Men. I don't know. But if Hound is on a listed theme team, friendly characters have X-Men team ability. If they already have X-Men team ability, uh, when they use it, increase the result of the roll by plus one, so that's kind of nice. Uh, but it's still only like a 50% chance that you're going to hurt yourself then for using it. So not amazing. Uh, like I said, overall, he's one of the least good of the chases. You really have to play him with, uh, I feel like the Dark Phoenix and the Thor to get the most use out of him. And even then, there's just better options. But moving right along, next up we have Ghost Goblin. I uh, like this one a lot. This is one of my favorites. The sculpt on this dude is insane. I think it's, you know, right up there with Dark Phoenix as one of the best sculpts in the whole set. Uh, he looks amazing. Of course, this is a Ghost Rider Green Goblin, so very cool. I just love the idea of that. So he actually has the Sinister Syndicate and Masters of Evil team ability. Uh, it'd be cool if he had Mystics too, because he's a Ghost Rider, but whatever. Uh, five range double target. Um, this one is one of the ones you really kind of want to start out with the 50 point line because the 100 point line doesn't really offer you much except for like plus one defense and a special damage power over the regular perplex. But anyway, we'll take a look at that. So eight movement running shot, 11 attack with the special attack power. Um, of course, he has the Masters of Evil trait to swap between them. But special attack power gives him energy explosion, poison, improved targeting, destroys blocking, and Ghost Goblin deals penetrating damage. That's so good. Oh my gosh, this one is one of the best ones to swap into because like I said, like uh, if Kid Thanos or any of them was to, 
you know, charge or move into a group of enemies, you could then swap to this guy. He hasn't been moved or placed this turn, technically. So that was somebody else. So uh, he can take that free action to poison everybody for penetrating damage on top of it, because all of the damage he deals is penetrating, uh, which also includes his energy explosion. So, of course, a no-brainer equipment on this guy is the pumpkin bombs. Give that three damage penetrating energy explosion. Only thing that sucks about equipping any of these guys with anything in general is that um, equipment doesn't carry over if you swap yourself out with somebody, so they will immediately drop their equipment. So if you do equip this guy with anything, it's you're not going to want to swap him out. You're pretty much going to start with him, have him equipped with that, and just keep him the whole game, which is fine if you're going to use him for a Sinister Syndicate theme, which we'll talk about in just a second. But on his special defense power he has for the last half of his dial, you got energy shield deflection, regeneration, and super senses. So that's really nice. You got a little extra defense, and he can keep healing himself up there. And on his damage power, you got perplex and outwit. Once per turn, when Ghost Goblin uses either to target an opposing character, after resolutions, he may deal one damage to an opposing character adjacent to the targeted character. So as long as one of your opponent's characters is adjacent to another one of their characters, you could perplex or outwit them and then damage the person next to them, which is really strong in my opinion. Uh, with all the other stuff he can do. And then on his team-up card, which is, in my opinion, the best team-up card of them all, but I'm a little biased because I love Sinister Syndicate. It's for Masters of Evil or Sinister Syndicate. If Ghost Goblin is on a listed theme team, friendly characters have Sinister Syndicate team ability. If they already have Sinister Syndicate team ability, when they use it, modify their attack plus one. So that's so good when you combine some of the other effects that we have just gotten for that team ability. You know, in the last set, Spider-Man Beyond Amazing, uh, if you use him with like the rare Kingpin, they can all be considered adjacent when they're within six squares of Kingpin. So you can kind of move him around. Uh, and even if he copies N11, he just gets a plus one to 12. If you were to have somebody that uh, already had like a 12 or something, then he gets the plus one that to uh you know 13 and of course you're going to want to play him with like the prime uh iron spider so then he's protected outwit because uh, he already has sinister syndicate team ability and then all of them are protected outwit and everything so yeah a lot of synergy now with sinister syndicate team theme teams uh, i really like to see that a lot like i said that's my favorite personally of all of the uh team up cards that they all have so i am going to try to go out of my way to get that but also, just getting Ghost Goblin is going to be hard enough because he is one of the best chases, in my opinion, uh, for that mainly for that special attack power and for the amazing sculpt and all the other fun stuff he can do. So he's great. Definitely one of the top tier chases in the set, in my opinion. But moving on next, we finally have the other chase that I managed to get my hands on so far, the Iron Inquisitor. This guy is super amazing, in my opinion. Uh, another one of my favorite chases from this set. Uh, and I am a little biased because I love Iron Man type figures, but, uh, regardless, Iron Inquisitor is like an evil version of Iron Man, but it's, uh, I believe his father, actually. Uh, yeah, Howard Stark, so that's really cool. But anyway, he's got the Masters of Evil and S.H.I.E.L.D. team abilities there. Of course, the trait to swap between them all. Armor for the Council of Red, free. Choose a character in your KO area and choose a standard power printed on that character's card. Iron Inquisitor can use the chosen power until you choose again. So that's kind of nice, you know, if there's some KO'd characters, you get to pick a power from their dials. Uh, so yeah, either 100 or 50 points, you know, you've got pretty great stats here. 11 penetrating blasts, 19, 4 damage, but we're always playing them for the 50, 90% of the time. That TK is really nice, and uh, we'll take a look at his specials because they are pretty crazy. You got Impervious, but can reduce penetrating damage. And adjacent friendly characters can use Mastermind, but only to choose characters with the Masters of Evil keyword, Protected Outwit. So that could be him or another character, but the fact that that whole power is Protected Outwit and can reduce penetrating damage is nuts. So that Impervious can really soak up a lot of damage. But then he has Perplex, and when Iron Inquisitor uses it to target another friendly character, that character can use Probability Control until your next turn. I can't tell you how much I love that power. You know, one of the main reasons they took away Theme Team Probs, uh, they said, was because, you know, it was pretty much always used in the first couple attacks of the game. Uh, and, you know, you just throw your characters out there, try to Alpha Strike, and just burn all your Theme Probs right away to make sure it sticks. So this guy 
basically just perplexes up somebody's movement or range or attack or whatever you need. Then you TKs them out there, and then they throw themselves at the opponent, and they have their own prob to use. So uh, I feel like, in a sense, it kind of gives you that feeling of like having that theme prob when you need it to make sure your alpha strike hits. So this guy is a really, really strong alpha strike type figure. Uh, well, enabler, I should say. He himself isn't an alpha strike figure, but he enables that kind of play very well. Like I said, just perplex up their attack, TK them out. You know, they're running shot or charge or hypersonic, whatever. And, uh, you know, they can prob themselves. You don't need to run somebody else out there to try and get line of fire and range to prob them. They just have it. So it's really, really cool. And, uh, and then everybody next to him can just mastermind damage onto him. And you, he can absorb, you know, penetrating blast hits. Uh, it can't be outwitted, so they can't just outwit it away. Very strong defensive power. And if he does, you know, miss that impervious roll and take a few clicks of damage, he's got four straight clicks of regen to just heal himself back up. So, yeah, pretty crazy. You also got the Masters of Evil and Shield team ability that can also be assisting your team that way. Uh, upping their range, you know, minus one defense on adjacent characters, take a power action to up range damage. So, yeah, I love him a lot. He does a lot of really awesome things. To help out your team both offensively and defensively so i think it's a really well-rounded figure plus the sculpt is awesome i always love looking at these kind of like you know power suit type figures this one's really cool looking in my opinion uh but then he also has a team up card that i unfortunately don't have yet but uh, i am gonna track that down but it's for of course masters of evil or shield if our inquisitor is on a listed theme team when a friendly character uses outwit perplex or probability control their minimum range is seven that's nuts, uh, considering the minimum range for all those is currently four, that almost doubles the minimum range for those powers. So that's gonna be really strong if you manage to put him on Masters of Evil or Shield teams. Somebody with a four or five range suddenly gets like a plus two or plus three to their range when they're probbing stuff or outwitting something, which is very useful, especially with the you know smaller maps and all that kind of stuff. And it also counts for him because he only has a four range with Perplex. So that ups his range when using his own perplex, which is really useful. And of course, if he's on that theme team, whoever he's perplexing is going to get that prob. So you could kind of perplex somebody seven scores away from him, and then they have a seven range prob to use, which is really cool. So yeah, I like his team up quite a bit. Again, probably not the best one, but I think that one's actually more useful than some of the other ones. So I like him a lot. And his, like I said, as a figure, he's very well-rounded and one of my favorites of the whole set. All right, and for the last of the chases, uh, I don't have the figure, but I do at least have his team-up card, and that is Thor, uh, who has Masters of Evil team ability, and uh, normally he does have, you know, the swap trait, but um, I think all of the, the team-up cards kind of get rid of the swap trait, now that I think about it, uh, which is something to consider. I can't believe I didn't really notice that earlier, <laughs> just now that I'm looking at this one. I'm thinking it doesn't have the swap trait, which again, I don't think I've seen any Aratus for, so I, I, now that I think about it, I do remember somebody mentioning something about that with the Mephisto card when we first saw that previewed, that it, he didn't have a couple of his traits originally, they were like replaced by these. Uh, so yeah, I guess they don't get to swap out if you choose to use them on the theme team, which is interesting, but it makes a lot of sense, I guess. You kind of got to commit to having their team up card. Um, I don't know, maybe there was an rata. If I miss that, let me know. I'll have to look that up later now that, I, now that I'm thinking of it. So my apologies. But uh, anyway, he has team up for Asgardian or Masters of Evil. If Thor's on a listed theme team, when a friendly character deals damage, that damage can't be reduced below two. So that is actually pretty good, honestly. Can't be reduced below two if uh, Asgardian or Masters of Evil. I could see using him just for this team up card, honestly. But you have uh, another trait here that gives him enhancement. And if another friendly character that shares a keyword with Thor took damage from an attack since your last turn, modify his defense plus one. If the shared keyword is Phoenix Force keyword, modify his defense plus two instead. So you can kind of see how very much like the Hound, he's uh, kind of more defensive, you know, staying next to Dark Phoenix, uh, getting plus two defense, enhancing her damage up probably. Uh, and then he also has a special defense power here. Stop toughness, free, KO Thor. 
If you do, choose a friendly character and roll a d6. Heal the chosen character equal to half the result. If the chosen character has the Masters of Evil keyword, don't half the result. So, I mean, if you really, really needed to, you could heal up somebody, you know, maybe five or six clicks. If they're really, really low health and you think that would actually save them from being KO'd or something, I guess. Uh, and if they're really that many points, I guess. Because, you know, again, you're probably going to be playing this guy at 50 points just because... Uh, but I don't know. Uh, starting for 100, you got Running Shot, Energy Explosion, Invuln, Range Combat Expert, 11 for 3, so it'd be 12 for 4, unless you're Energy Exploding, of course. Um, then on his 50 line, he only has Sidestep, Penetrating Blast, 18, Invuln, 3 damage, Range Combat Expert, so again, be 12 for 4, Penetrating Blast, but only with Sidestep. So yeah, I don't know, I'd probably end up playing him on the 50 most of the time. Uh, yeah, and then he gets Running Shot with, like, Close Combat Expert... Uh, plasticity with a 12 attack precision strike. His dial is kind of all over the place. Get some prob there. But yeah, then they got that stop click. Which, oof, I don't know. <sighs> KOing a character just to heal up another one, not always the best deal. Uh, you're just giving your opponent like 50 points so that they maybe don't score your other like 50 to 100 point character. I don't know. I'd probably rather just him heal off the stop click than try to do that. But given the situation, I don't know, maybe there's some situations that might come in handy. Regardless, he's okay. I do like his team up, though. Can't uh, Your opponents can't reduce damage below 2 if he's on that listed theme team. That could be pretty nuts um, uh, if you build around that. But yeah, him and Hound are probably one of the least good ones, honestly, which kind of sucks because Thor and, and Wolverine, like evil versions of them, would be cool, you'd think. But meh. I don't know. Uh, they're my least favorites anyway, uh, except, like I said, he's his team-up card's kind of cool, but besides that, all the other ones are a lot better, in my opinion. <laughs> but regardless, we have one more Ultra Chase to take a look at, and then uh, we'll quickly go over some of the other, like, OP kit figures as well. All right, so uh, the Ultra Chase of the set, Mephisto, um, one of the least amazing Ultra Chase sculpts we've ever had. <laughs> So that's kind of lame, but he's pretty interesting. He's got Cosmic Energy team ability, Masters of Evil team ability, and Mystics team ability. He's only 30 points. Uh, he's got Plasticity, Poison, Super Senses, and a special damage power. Only three clicks long. Uh, he's got Improved Movement for characters. He starts off with these three traits here. The first one, Sideline Active. When a character leaves a sideline after resolutions, you may generate Mephisto from your sideline adjacent to that character. Even if he wasn't placed on your sideline for this effect, which that actually doesn't really matter anymore, uh, but if that character was opposing, Mephisto has immune until your next turn, and then Mephisto can't be included on your sideline during force construction. So, kind of oof on that one. <laughs> you can't just throw him on the sideline, swap somebody out at the beginning of the game and get him for free. Um, you kind of have to start with him on your team. Uh, although I have heard of uh, using a strategy, starting him with him on your team, giving him, you know, like a certain keyword somehow and swapping him out at the beginning with somebody else. And then once that character swaps out for him, he just pops back off the sideline. So you kind of get a free 30 points that way. Um, so that's an interesting strategy. Then you have another trait here that says, when Mephisto is KO'd, add him to your sideline instead of removing him from the game. Even if he previously left your sideline for a different effect, he is still scored protected pulse wave. So uh, every time they can continuously KO him, continuously get 30 points, but he'll just keep going back to your sideline and you can potentially keep popping him back into the game. So that's pretty awesome. And then forming a team of our own once per turn, when another character leaves a sideline after resolutions, you may heal one click on a friendly character or remove an action token from a friendly character. If the character that left a sideline has the Masters of Evil keyword, you may choose both. So, of course, he's going to be really good for if you have a team with multiples of these, like, Masters of Evil just swapping in and out and in and out. You can just keep bringing him back into the game constantly. So that's really cool. Uh, and then he, on his damage power there, he's got Outwit, Probability Control, and Shape Change. So he does have t double rollouts. You know, you got Outwit and Prob. Uh, and so he's technically, for 30 points, he's doing a lot. Plasticity, Poison, Super Senses, Shape Change. Uh, Mystics, Cosmic Energy, Masters of Evil, Outwit Prob, like that's so much to do for 30 points. 
Uh, just that alone is pretty much worth just tossing him on your team, because why not? But yeah, I mean, he's got a lot going on. Every time you bring somebody in from a sideline, uh, or your opponent does, whenever another character leaves a sideline. So you could be healing clicks constantly by that effect. Uh, if he's KO'd, you can just bring him back in if somebody leaves a sideline. And if it's an opposing character, you know, you can pop him next to them, and then he's just sitting there with plasticity poison and immune for a turn. Uh, so he's got a lot of really good effects. He's really, really strong. He does have a bunch of different team-up effects that replace a lot of his traits on his team-up card. Uh, but the first one, Masters of Evil or Ruler, if Mephisto is on a listed theme team when he would be dealt damage from an attack, he may instead choose another friendly character within range and line of fire. If he does, that character takes one unavoidable damage. So uh, that's pretty good, but another friendly within range and line of fire, so five range, and he has to be able to draw a line of fire. But giving them one unavoidable instead of him taking any damage is pretty great. Masters of Evil or Monster theme team, if Mephisto's on a listed theme team, when a standard character is KO'd, you may heal a friendly character one click. So kind of like giving everybody Doom team ability in a sense. <laughs> And then you have the Deity or Mystical theme team. If he's on the list of theme team, when a friendly character within range and line of fire makes an attack, he may replace a die in that role with a six. If he does, after resolutions, deal him one unavoidable damage. That right there is probably the most powerful effect of all of them. Um, you know, I would say the team up for Masters of Evil and Monster is kind of whatever. Um, whenever someone's KO'd, heal a click. Meh, that's fine. Uh, the one for the ruler or Masters of Evil is really cool just to keep him alive. Uh, be, but uh, I feel like if you're using that one, it's pretty easy to just not attack him. Go for somebody else, because otherwise he's just going to, you know, give it to them for one damage anyway. But yeah, the Deity or Mystical one is really strong. If he's on a listed theme team, when any friendly character within range and line of fire makes an attack, you can replace any die with a six. So you could go from a crit miss to rolling a seven and probably hitting, which is crazy. You could have a six and any other results and get a crit hit. So very powerful effect. Uh, of course, he takes an unavoidable for using it, so he can only do it three times before he just KOs himself. So you do have to be careful with that, but again, very powerful effect. You know, having basically a three times per game to guarantee a hit almost is like an insanely powerful effect. So definitely worth it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's an ultra chase. He's really hard to pull, but he has so many crazy powerful effects for 30 points. You know, he's definitely worth the points. Just, if it would be so ridiculously crazy if you could just put him on the sideline. But even just having to pay 30 points to put him on your team to start with is still worth it. So, yeah, this dude's insane. Definitely worth using. But yeah, he's an ultra chase. Of course, he's usually, usually ultra chases are pretty good. I feel like this maybe one of the most over-the-top ultra chases for the points. Uh, yeah, only 30 points, he does a frick ton of stuff. So if you manage to be lucky enough to pull him or trade for him, you know, give him a try, he's probably going to be pretty great for you. All right, you guys, so that's it for all the fancy chases and awesome figures. Um, but before we end off this video, I wanted to quickly go over the uh, extra OP kit figures. We got three Play at Home kit figures this time, as well as a Hawkeye release day OP kit figure, which I don't have yet, but I'll have them soon. Uh, so anyway, let's just take a quick look at these. We got Captain America. Uh, now, if you guys watched my unboxing video for this, I already kind of gave over, gave you guys my thoughts. And I just talked about this one a little bit in my top five Captain America. Give him an honorable mention. He's pretty good. Uh, you got Avengers Past Soldier, Avengers Team Ability, Leading the Charge, Leadership Willpower. When he uses either power to remove an action token from a friendly character, after resolutions, you can heal them one click or remove an additional action token that does not trigger this trait. So that's pretty cool. 55 points kind of sucks. I wish he was an even 50 or like 45 would be cool too. Uh, but yeah, running shot, precision strike, the whole dial just kind of flips between like running shot, ESD, enhancement or charge, combat reflexes and empower and just full dial precision strike. So nothing too crazy with just a two damage there that whole time is kind of my only problem with him. I wish he had some threes, but I really like this friendly characters with the Avengers keyword that have no action tokens have safeguard outwits. Uh, that is one of my favorite things about him. I really want to play him with the prime Iron Man. Uh, that we took a look at in the rares that uh, has the ability to whenever he removes an action token with his leadership or willpower he can remove another action token from somebody anywhere on the map uh, and that in conjunction with his power to do something similar 
uh, can really just keep your whole team action token free. And, uh, you know, you can be safeguard at wit most of the time because of that. So that's really great. Uh, next up here, actually, first let's take a look at the Hulk. And uh, this Hulk is pretty interesting. Nothing too crazy, but he seems pretty fun to me. So he has a trait here that says, when Hulk makes a close attack, if he occupies the listed terrain after resolutions, he may use one corresponding effect as free, hindering, smoke cloud, elevated, move, water, pulse wave. So uh, pretty interesting. If you're in hindering and hit with a close attack, you can free smoke cloud, which is okay. Elevated, he can move, which is pretty good. He could reposition somewhere else. Not bad. And then water, he gets to use pulse wave, which could be great. Uh, could be bad if you've got too many friendlies near you. Improved movement destroys blocking is always good. He's a nice uh, 75 points there. Got one of the classic Hulk dials that builds up power as it takes damage. And got a little steel energy to, so he can kind of stay somewhere in the middle there. But I do like the special damage power that gives him passenger one free, make a close attack, but only to target characters that have been targeted by another friendly character with the scientist keyword this turn. So it's very interesting. You could kind of play him with any scientist that has something like perplex or outwit or something so that he can carry a scientist up there. Um, they can perplex them down something and then he can free take a close attack on them. Pretty cool. Uh, another good one is the brain from the Batman team upset because that thing can actually take an action after it's been carried. So it can like mind control. So you can move him up, mind control with the brain um, to have them like attack their own friendly and then maybe move closer to Hulk or something. And then he can free punch them. So that's a fun combo too. Uh, and then last but not least, we've got Superior Iron Man here, who is probably my favorite of the three, but I'm biased towards Iron Man, so there's that. Uh, but I've been waiting for one of these guys for a while. He's got Extremis 3.0, which gives him Perplex. When Superior Iron Man or a character with an Extremis token uses Perplex, after resolutions, give all targeted characters an Extremis token if they don't already have one. If all other standard characters on the map have an Extremis token, modify his combat values by plus two, and he has cosmic energy team ability. That's actually really easy to pull off, I've found, if you have a team full of cheap Perplex characters. Uh, I just recently played a fun game with him with a bunch of Perplexers, and uh, I did manage to, uh, you know, all the couple games I tried him out, I got, you know, you just kind of make a Perplex line with, so he just perplexes, 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 perplexes. They all just perplex each other. And uh, then your whole team has extremist tokens turn one. Turn two, you know, you all run up there, do your thing. And I would say usually by turn three, I would manage to have an extremist token on everybody. Because, uh, it, you know, it gives you an excuse to perplex your opponent, perplex down their defense, perplex down their attack, whatever. Uh, give them an extremist token. So, very cool. Then he gets plus two all stats and power cosmic, which makes him absolutely insanely powerful. But taking a look at his defense power here, he's got invulnerability and mastermind. And modify defense plus one for each adjacent character with an extremist token, protected outwit. Gotta love that. Invuln and Mastermind that's protected out with, and he gets plus one for every adjacent friendly that has an extremist token. So he could easily get himself up to an eight, you know, 19 or 20 defense. And then of course, if everybody has perplex, pretty easy to perplex his defense up some more. So he could easily be rocking like a you know 21 defense the whole time. Uh, and then once he gets to the plus twos, then he just has to like, you know, carry one person with him and he's instantly plus three defense the whole time. Uh, but yeah, damage power, exploit weakness, uh, and giant size as well, which is nice. And when Superior Iron Man uses Perplex, he may instead target all opposing characters within range and line of fire and chooses one combat value for all. Oh, Underworld also lets him carry people, which is nice. He can carry up to two people that way, which is really good for that defense power. Uh, I mean, he already has flight to carry one, but being able to carry two is very good. So yeah, uh, I like him a lot. Um, I played him at 125, the full point value. So he had the four damage, penetrating blast and prob. Uh, for 75, not bad. You know, he got sidestep and outwit and stuff. I, like I said, played him at 125 and he was great. Uh, you know, you can carry up a couple people with perplex. You can all be perplex and stuff. Um, I liked the Ant-Man legacy card figure. Uh, which we'll take a look at in the next video, as well as the 25-point Gamora from the Avengers Forever set. 
um, because she can like remove tokens from him and she's another cheap perplex as well as a few others uh, it was a fun team anyway uh, that's the only one I managed to try out of the three of them the other two combos are more hypothetical that one I actually used and it was pretty good so they're all great uh, last but not least I'll put the Hawkeye on screen for us real quick he comes in at 50 or 25 points. He's got the Avengers Initiative team ability, uh, six movement running shot with a six range, 10 attack with a special attack power, uh, 17 combat reflexes and two damage with range combat expert. I'm not the worst Avenger. If Hawkeye is the lowest point character on your force, he can't be targeted by non-adjacent opposing characters. If Hawkeye is on an Avengers theme team, modify his combat values by plus one. So that's great, just tossing him on an Avengers team, he's instantly, uh, even if he's not the lowest point character, he's gonna be uh, 11 attack for three damage or a 12 attack for four damage with the range combat expert with the Avengers initiative team ability to see through hindering and oh, with a seven range as well, plus one all stats so he can running shot for four, shoot for seven with a 12 attack, four damage. Uh, and then his special attack power, gosh, I love arrows. Free, choose one to use this turn, energy explosion, incapacitate, penetrating blast, or precision strike. So great choices there, great little pick of power. It could be uh, 12 for four, penetrating blast, or precision strike, or uh, 12 attack, energy explosion, whatever you need. They can see through hindering. So I love him at 50 points, he's great. Uh, at 25 points, you got side set, precision strike, super senses, range combat expert. So again, uh, potentially rocking a 12 attack, three damage with precision strike on sidestep if he's on an Avengers team. If he's the lowest point character on your team, which is pretty easy to do at 25 points, then he also can't be targeted by non-adjacent opposing characters. So pretty awesome. Uh, I like him a lot for either point value. He's really fun, uh, really great Hawkeye. Like I said, I can't wait to get mine. Uh, that's gonna do it though. That's all the chases, the ultra chase, as well as some extra, you know, OP kit figures to round it off. Uh, we got one more video coming up where I'm going to go over all the legacy card figures and that'll wrap it up. If you guys have been enjoying this series so far, don't forget to smash that like button. It does help me out a lot. And don't forget to click that subscribe button over there so you don't miss any future videos. As always, if you guys would like to help support the channel even more, make sure you check the links in the description for our Patreon or hit that join membership button down below as well to become a patron or YouTube member for as little as $1 a month. You can see your name here in the credits as well as be entered into our monthly giveaways. So make sure to check that out if it interests you. Lots of great stuff there. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys again so much for watching. And until next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters signing off.